Tramway engines. Ghost train. And every year on the date of the accident, it runs again, plunging into the gap, shrieking like a lost soul. Percy, what are you talking about? The ghost train. Driver saw it last night. Where? asked Thomas and Toby together. He didn't say, but it must have been on our line. He says ghost trains run as a warning to others. Ooh, he went on. It makes my wheels wobble to think of it. Puh, said Thomas. You're just a silly little engine, Percy. I'm not scared. Thomas didn't believe in your ghost, said Percy next morning. His driver laughed. <laughs> Neither did I. It was a pretend ghost on television. Percy was disappointed. But he was too busy all day with his stone shocks to think about ghosts. That evening he came back, light engine, from the harbour. He liked running at night. He coasted along without effort, the rails humming cheerfully under his wheels, and signal the lights changed to green as they passed. He always knew where he was, even in the dark. Crows far crossing, he chanted happily. We shan't be long now. Sam had forgotten that Mr. Crow wanted a load of line taken to 48 Field. When he remembered, it was nearly dark. He drove in a hurry, bumped over the crossing, and sank his cart's front wheels in mud at the field gate. The horse tried hard but couldn't move it. The cart's tail still forded the rails. Sam gave it up. He hung on his horse and ran back to the farm for help. There's still time, he told himself. No strange and due for an hour, but he reckoned without Percy. Percy broke the cars to smithereens, and lime flew everywhere. They found no one at the crossing, so they went to the nearest signal box. Hello, said the signalman. What have you done to Percy? He's white all over. Percy's driver explained. I'll see to it, said the signalman. But you better clean Percy, or people will think he's a ghost. Percy chuckled. <laughs> Do let's pretend I'm a ghost and scare Thomas. That will teach him to say I'm a silly little engine. On their way, they met Toby, who promised to help. Thomas was being hauled up for his eating train, when Toby hurried in saying, Percy's had an accident. Poor engine, said Thomas. Botheration, that means I'll be late. They've cleared a the line for you, Toby went on, but there's something worse. Out with it, Toby. Thomas interrupted. I can't wait all evening. I've just seen something, said Toby in a shaky voice. It looked like Percy's ghost. It said it was was coming here to, 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 to warn us. Puh, who cares? Don't be frightened, Toby. I'll take care of you. Percy approached the shed quietly and glided through it. Peep, 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 he shrieked. As it had been arranged, Toby's driving fireman quickly shut the doors. Let me in! Let me in! said Percy in a spooky voice. No, no! answered Toby. Not by the smoke of my chimney chim chim! I'll chuff and I'll puff and I'll break your door in! Oh dear! exclaimed Thomas. It's getting late. I've no idea. I must find Andy and Clarabelle. He hurried out the other way. Percy was none the worse for his adventure. He was soon cleaned. But Thomas never returned. Next morning, Toby asked him where he'd been. Ah, uh, well, said Thomas. I knew you'd be sad about Percy, and, uh, I knew I wouldn't like to intrude. Uh, I said to the good shed, and... Oh, uh, he went on hurriedly. Uh, sorry, uh, can't stop. Uh, got to see a coach about the train, and he shot off like a jack rabbit. Percy rolled alongside. Well, 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 he explained. What do you know about that? Anyone would think, chuckled Toby, that our Thomas has just seen a ghost. <laughs>